In the latest episode of Dragon Ball Hakai, the Celestial Mages sent thousands of soldiers to every planet in Universe 7, and these enemies ended up invading planet Earth. Luckily, the moment they invaded, Goku was there to save humanity. With a risky move, Goku raised his hands and performs an Ultra Hakai, killing countless enemies at once. After that, the mages were forced to send a group called the Elite 16, a group made of up to 16 warriors with special abilities. The purpose of this group was to collect energy of the strongest warriors of Earth, so that they could wake up the supreme deity, Zarat. But when invading the planet, the Elite 16 soldiers ended up facing all the Z warriors, and in the great confrontation, 10 invaders were defeated, leaving only the 6 strongest members of this group, who at the moment were facing Gohan. And as part of the plan orchestrated by the Supreme Kai, Gohan increased his power to the max, and let his energy be stolen by the 6 remaining warriors. After that, the invaders go to the mage's hideout to deliver the energy collected on Earth. What they didn't know is that they were being followed by a group of guardians under command of Pycon. This group aimed to discover the location of the mage's hideout. And episode 23 begins in the hideout of the celestial mages. Episode 23, the Nine Dominations, Attack on Monster Island. Gilmore lay in a scene of despair on the top of a hill. The bodies of his fellow from Elite 16 who had failed in the mission to collect energy from the Earthlings for the awakening of Zarat were scattered. Each of them died by the clutches of the newly arrived Nine Dominations, the only team in the service of the Celestial Mages that was more powerful than they. Gilmer creates two energy shurikens in his hands, launching them at the leader of the Nine Dominations. Gilmer says, take that! This is for my friends, bastard! The attack is destroyed into particles after Gilmer reneges with a wave of his hand. Gilmer says, why did you do that? We serve the same master. Susei says, you are aware of the condition since you entered. The leader says, failing a quest in the service of the Celestial Mages only means one thing. And he raises his right hand carrying red energy as he finishes his sentence and says, death. And so Gilmer's life is taken. A woman who is part of the Nine Domination says, at least Arakos' team managed to collect a good amount of energy, said Kor. But I'm really curious about the power of these Earthlings. How about taking a look around? To which the leader responds, I make your words my words. I'm sensing two rising energies a little far away from here. If we're quick, we'll get there in time and see who they are. Come on, Nine Dominations. Let's see what these Earthlings are capable of and confirm that we didn't make a hasty judgment on the Elite 16. They head towards the source of power they are feeling. Goten and Trunks continued their match against Cell's juniors, who totaled seven. Transformed into Super Saiyan 2, they glided above the trees of Monster Island, clashing their fists and delivering high-impact kicks pressured by the speed and combination of the little warrior's powers. Goten yells, Masenko! Goten fires a golden flash as he raises his hand to his forehead, looking for two of the Cell Juniors that were hit squarely. Goku's son celebrates and says, Got you this time! But he is dismayed to see that they regenerate their bodies at high speed. The two stuck their tongues out teasing Goten. Cell Jr. says, You won't be able to catch us again, you asshole. Cell Jr.'s generate a Kienzan by raising their arms, launch the technique at Goten, who narrowly deflects the attack, then obliterates him with energy balls. Relieved to escape the latest attack, Goten says, That was close. But wait, where's Trunks? At that moment, a burst of golden energy occurs beneath the skies, revealing Trunks emerging from the midst of the line of fire of five junior cells. Trunks says, Run, Goten. They are getting more and more bloodthirsty. Goten and Trunks stand side by side, both with Super Saiyan 2 powers. Trunks says, We will have to fight together if we want to have any chance. If we awaken the Super Saiyan 3, we will win easily. Goten looks around to see Cell Juniors surrounding them. And then he says, Now! Both start an incessant fire of golden energy balls that are invading the creature's attack field. Goten yells, Are you enjoying this? But then an unfamiliar voice echoes. It's Takebe, and he says, Very much. Ravenous flames invade the place, setting fire on everything. Takebe says, Burn! Burn, Earthlings, burn! The author of the attack was Takebe, one of the nine dominations in the service of their leader, Susei. At that instant, number 17, which was patrolling the island, was on alert, creating a defensive shield at the place where the newly arrived enemies revealed themselves. He was there and lying in wait, contemplated the current scenario. Nine warriors lay face to face with Goten, Trunks, and the Cells, each with their very peculiar appearance. 
Android 17 thinks, if I reveal my presence, I won't be able to protect the animals effectively. I'd better leave the problem to Goten, Trunks, and the others, and hope they have the wisdom to guide the fight away from here. Furious by having his training interrupted by someone who clearly had bad intentions, Goten asked the visitors, What do you want from us? Do you belong to that evil group that invaded Earth not long ago? Another member of the enemy group, Jishin, reveals, don't you dare compare us with those weak from Elite 16. We are the Dine Dominations, the most powerful team of warriors in the service of the Celestial Mages. Susei, the leader, reveals, We are here because we feel your energy, and we think you might be interesting, as many of the Elite 16 worms have failed in their mission to defeat the Earthlings and gather the energy needed for the Supreme Being to awaken. Showing a provocative smile, Trunks asks, So, you're here to fight with us. Looks like we're getting important. Goten, it's time for us to fight side by side with our little friends here. What do you think of the idea, little cell juniors? One of the little creatures exclaims, Looks like it will be fun. Come on, guys. Get rid of them with them. Putting herself on guard, the woman named Kor says, It was easier than I thought. Permission to kill, Lord Susei? The leader responds, Permission granted. Susei faces the group of warriors coming towards him with a slight smile. When the clash occurs in the gale, the warriors disperse in one-on-one -on -one combat at full speed. Goten faces off against Takebe while Trunks faces off against Jinshin. The rest of them, Susei, Kyofu, Kinsoku, Puraza, Kor, Yogan, and Mokusai faced the Cell Juniors, who were now fighting separately. Laughing, the enemy leader shouts, You're not worth anything. You're nothing but trash, said Susei, as he delivers a palm swipe that reveals itself in a colossal pulse of water. Behold, a torrent of stones runs through the air, as Trunks is destroying with his punches and kicks until he finds himself face to face with Jinshin. The boy comments, What strange powers! Do you use the energy of nature to fight? Trunks extends his right arm, charging energy as Jinshin explains. We actually use our own energy. But yes, we can easily connect with the energy around us. Jinshin easily breaks through Trunks. Big bang attack, grabbing the boy by the neck and diving with him in a high speed spiral with both hitting the ground. After doing this, he continues the explanation. Each of us master one of nature's nine essential elements. That's where our organization's name comes from. Of course, hearing that before death is irrelevant to you. Trunks lands a kick on Jinshin's sensible regions in time to avoid the warrior's final blow, who is now making a comical expression of pain. The boy says, If you're thinking it's going to be that easy, you need to review your concepts. Big bang attack! By moving his hands at high speeds, he shoots golden energy balls, which Jinshin directs to his face. Nearby, crossing the torrent of fire that spreads through the skies, Goten invades Takebe's attack field, throwing punches and kicks that the invader was dodging and hitting. Goten punches Takebe straight in the stomach until he realizes something. Goten says, ouch, my hand is burning. He sees that the fist he used to hit Takebe is slightly scorched. The boy complains, what are you made of? The flame mage replies, when I'm connected to the world around me, my whole body becomes a glowing mass of pure heat. Takebe laughs evilly and continues his speech. <laughs> Whoever touches my body will burn more and more until he can't fight anymore. Do you want to continue? Goten responds, It just means I have to avoid direct contact. Goten guides the arms to the right side of the body and concentrates a blue energy. Kamehameha! He smiles as he fires the energy cannon at Takebe. Takebe summons a pillar of fire colored energy against Goten's Kamehameha, saving himself from destruction. After doing so, the invading maid says, We're just getting started, kid. I believe it will be interesting. After all, you're much stronger than your little friends. Goten is surprised and worried by those words. Goten says, What are you talking about? Goten looks in the direction where Takebe pointed, seeing that the Cell Juniors were having a hard time against the other members of the Nine Dominations. Goten says, I see, when they fight together that can create combinations of attacks that easily overwhelm us. But fighting alone isn't as powerful as they seem. Takebe adds, They will fall one by one into the hands of my dear friends. Takebe envelops his body in blazing flames as he says, Just as you will fall through my hands. Kyofu creates a whirlwind that lifts one of the Cell Juniors aloft, hitting him with overwhelming air pressure. Kinzoku delivers a blow with a silver blade generated from his own arm, breaking the shoulder of one of the little cells. Huraza traps one of them in a clear fluid in the ground, firing a shot straight into its head. Kor freezes the body of one of them, who was trying to free himself by devouring the ice around him. 
and Yogan ambushes another leading the lava stream in pursuit, making him run for his life. Mokusai drives a stump into the seventh body, now aiming to deliver the final blow to his head. Seeing all these things going on, Trunks says, Damn it, the Cell Juniors aren't doing it by fighting separately. Trunks analyzes this while dodging the gigantic rock thrown by Jinshin. And after doing so, he continues, If it continues like this, our training partners will be destroyed. Trunks launches himself into Jinshin's body, hitting him with a high-powered punch, launching him like a meteor towards the sea. Cell Juniors were running away from the onslaught of the seven invading warriors, grouping themselves on a rock, placing their hands on each other's shoulders. They begin to glow with an opaque aura vaporizing from their body. They all say at the same time, If we can't beat them alone, then we'll do it together as one. A flash floods the battlefield, leaving the members of the Nine Domination surprised. Cell says, What nostalgia to fight with this old body of mine.